Hello and welcome to Books of Blood. My name is John and I am hoping I can get through this before my battery on my camera runs out. So this is 50 years of horror fiction and we're going to be talking about the year 2009. So let's go ahead and get this show on the road, shall we? All right, first up we've got The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. One post, excuse me, one post where, excuse me, one Post-war summer in his home of rural Warwickshire, Dr. Faraday, the son of a maid who has built a life of quiet respectability as a county physician, is called to a patient in lonely Hundreds Hall. Home to the heirs, family for over two centuries, the Georgian house, once impressive and handsome, is now in decline, its masonry crumbling, its gardens choked with weeds, the clock in its stable yard permanently fixed at twenty to nine. Its owners, mother, son, and daughter, are struggling to keep pace with the changing society, as well as with, co as with conflicts of their own. But are the heirs as haunted by something more sinister than a dying way of life? Little does Dr. Faraday know how closely and how terrifyingly their story is about to become intimately entwined with his. And that is The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. All right, next up, we've got House of Windows by John Langan. For the last few years, Veronica Croydon has been at the center of scandal, first as the younger woman for whom her famous professor left his wife, and then as his apparent widow. When a writer staying at the same vacation home as Veronica has the chance to hear her story, she ju he jumps at it. What follows takes him to the dark heart of a father's troubled relationship with his only son in a story that stretches from the Hudson Valley to Afghanistan and from post-9-11 America to Victorian England. House of Windows is a haunting exploration of a marriage under strain from forces both psychological and paranormal. With its combination of literary complexity and chilling supernatural violence, it is widely considered a masterpiece of contemporary horror fiction. And that is House of Windows by John Langan. Uh, next up, we've got Mall of Cthulhu by Seamus Cooper. Ten years ago, Ted and Laura read their university of a vampire sorority. Now Laura works for the FBI and Ted is a barista. When Ted stumbles onto a group of Cthulhu cultists planning to awaken the old ones through mystic incantations culled from the fabled Necronomicon, calling forth eldritch horrors into an unsuspecting world, he and Laura must spring into action, traveling from Boston to the seemingly peaceful city of Providence and beyond all the way to the sanity-shattering, non-Euclidean alleyways and towers of dread Rulia itself, in order to prevent an innocent shopping center from turning into the Mall of Cthulhu. And that is Mall of Cthulhu by Seamus Cooper. All right, next up we've got The Evil in Pemberley House by Philip Jose Farmer and Wynne Scott Eckert. Patricia Wildman, the daughter of the world-renowned adventurer and crime fighter of the 1930s and 40s, Dr. James Clark Doc Wildman, is all alone in the world when she inherits the family estate in Derbyshire, England, and true gothic tradition, old, dark, and supposedly haunted. But is the ghost real or a clever sham perpetrated by others to scare her off? As Patricia contends with the questionable motives of her distant relatives, Attempts to discern friend from foe and battles to overcome mysterious attackers. She struggles to reconcile, reconcile excuse me, the supernatural with rational scientific upbringing, while also attempting to work through unresolved feelings about her late parents. Set at Pemberley from Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice and deeply ingrained in worlds of Sherlock Holmes and Lord Greystoke, as well as the bronze champions of, of justice, Doc Wildman. The Evil in Pemberley House is a darkly erotic novel with broad appeal to readers of pulp and popular literature and fans of Philip Jose Farmer's own celebrated Wold Newton family. And that is... The Evil in Pemberley House. 
All right, last but not least, we have got Snarl by Lorne Dixon. Welcome to Easter Glen. It's a town like so many others. White picket fences, Sunday service at 9. They roll up the sidewalks at 10. There's one thing that makes the town different, though. Decades ago, the town's fathers brokered a deal with the monsters that live on the outskirts of town. It's a pact that works, mostly. And that is a very brief and very vague synopsis of Snarl by Lauren Dixon. Spoiler alert, it's a werewolf novel. I read it. It's really good. All right. Anyway, that is going to do it for the year 2009. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but these past videos from the year 2001 to the year to now, 2009, uh, you probably noticed that I'm wearing the same shirt in every single video. And, uh, that is because, of course, I've recorded all these videos at once and then, you know, edit them and do whatever with them. Uh, I do bathe. Trust me. I'm not, I don't, I don't not change clothes. I, I change clothes every day and I do bathe. You know, um, I either like run through the sprinklers or if it's a nice hot summer day, I usually just get butt naked and run through a car wash. One has little, little things that flip like that all over the place. Anyway, I'm kidding. Don't believe that. Or believe it, I don't care. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and take care, and stay scared. Bye-bye.